Due to the short duration of delivering the works at the Boston Manor Repairs, um, we had something like 13 to 14 weeks to deliver the works from when the cracks were found to when the uh, traffic embargo needed to be lifted on the M4 uh, for the Olympics. Um, this meant we had to look at some innovative techniques in making sure that the works were done efficiently, safely. And because the cracks in the electro slag wells were susceptible to brittle fracture um, and the repair strategy of putting splice plates top and bottom and bolting them together, um, which sounds like a simple operation, but because there was undulations in the plates adjacent to the electro slag wells, it wasn't as simple as putting plates on, bolting them together, that would induce some um, stresses into the weld and potentially cause the failure of the weld. Therefore, we had to look at ways of taking out these undulations and creating a parallel smooth surface for the plates to sit onto. Now, we did look at fine milling the tops of the flanges, however this would have introduced um, some design requirement checks on it um, and therefore not making it an efficient process. We therefore came up with a scanning, looking at a scanning ability to check on the undulations um, so we could create bespoke packer plates. Um, we got some companies to site, had a look at how this could be achieved through a, a process of trial and error and going through a number of different companies. We ended up with a company who were traditionally used in the automotive and aerospace uh, industry, um, where they've got a machine that takes something like 30,000 points a second, accuracy of 0 0.06 millimeters, so more than enough for what we wanted. Um, through this process, we were able to get um, delivery of scanning the plates to, or scanning the flanges to delivering the bespoke packer plates down to a 48 hour period. Um, this meant scanning the flanges, producing a model, surfacing that model, reverse engineering it is the term, term used, uh, and then creating the 3D CAD model, synchronizing that with the size of the splice plates, and then feeding that into the CNC milling machine. Um, so that was one of the ways that we um, introduced innovation into the, into the system and gives ourselves efficiency in delivering the work successfully. Uh, one of the other innovations used on the Boston Manor Viaduct was the uh, tension control bolts. Uh, we first looked at using the standard high strength friction grip bolts. However, because these works had to be take, undertaken during the night time when there was no traffic on the carriageway, as a safety precaution and reducing the load on it during the bolting sequence. However, this is um, quite a noisy operation and in a residential environment, um, these two don't really match. Um, so we looked at different bolting arrangements that could be used and the tension control bolts came out on top by a, by a long margin. They were very simple to use, um, they were more cost efficient um, and they had better health and safety benefits and environmental. Environmental from a side that the operation was a lot less noisy. From a health and safety point of view, the hand down vibration issues went away, a lot less tooling. It was a quite a light um, shear wrench gun instead of a, the standard air compressor with hoses and heavy pneumatic, uh, com heavy pneumatic equipment. Um, one of the other additional benefits of using the tension control bolt was that from a quality control point of view, once you'd installed the bolt, it snapped the lug off at the end of it to show that it had been tensioned uh, sufficiently for the preloaded bolt, so it was, um, for want of a better term, idiot proof. Um, once the lug was knocked off, it was a very simple check to show, a visual check to see that the bolts had been tensioned correctly. I believe without these two innovations, we would have been unable to deliver the work successfully in time for the Olympic embargo to be lifted.